What is up folks? Welcome back again, Justin Phillip here. And today I'm just gonna show you guys the current evolution of my shoulder rig. If you guys follow the channel, you know I'm constantly showing you guys the evolution of my rigs. And this is a pretty close setup to what I used on a corporate shoot when I was shooting on a Canon C300. So you can use this setup for pretty much any camera, FS5, um, Pocket 6K. I just only happen to own the GH5 and the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So we're just gonna be looking at this beast of a setup today and uh, it's pretty rad actually I got all the uh, all the ingredients that that I would want or that you would need and uh, we'll just start breaking it down and, and get right into it at the base of this thing is uh, the pocket 4k also I should say that none of these companies uh, sponsor me or my channel or this video um, I'm not trying to sell any products for any particular company it's just you know these are the tools that I like at the current moment uh, since the publishing of this video and it's just kind of what I'm rocking right now and I just like to share my experience strength and hope with all of you fellow low-budget independent filmmakers I have a V mount on here because for me it's the way to go. This is a, uh, a, a P-tap, like, like a P-tap hub. So this is, you know, you plug in, like I'm limited to only two uh, D-taps on this mount. So you can pick up this little accessory cable and actually uh, John Schweigart hooked me up with this. And if you haven't seen his little pro tip series, um, he shares some tips and tricks with us with his uh, cinematography skills, shooting music videos and feature films. Links now in the description below. I highly encourage you to check that out. But I was working with him as, as a first AC and like a camera tech. And he hooked me up with this little P-tap hub, and you can essentially turn one D-tap into four D-taps, and that's really great. And it's good for me because I have my Pocket 4K P-tapped out, I have the small HD 502, and then I have the Nucleus Nano, all going on to the V-mount battery. Um, now, if you saw my last, uh, one of my latest videos, I showed you guys how I uh, ditched Automos and I'm all into small HD now. And that video was me talking about what I believe was the most slept on small HD monitor, probably of all monitors, the 702 OLED. That screen was really large for any of my setups. It didn't really work for my shoulder rig. As you can see, it was just too wide because the 702 OLED is actually a little larger than seven inches. I think it's more like a 7.2, it's somewhere between 7.2 and 7.7 .7 inches. It's a large monitor. Great for a director's monitor, but not so great for onboard monitor, in my opinion, especially when you know I'm kind of compact here. So I found another local DP here in the LA area and traded him my 702 OLED package for the 502. And you'll see here, I got the side finder on here. Now, unfortunately for you guys, Small HD stopped making the side finder. So you'll probably have to look around on your second hand markets or maybe share grid or something. But man, I love it. As you can see, I can go here or I can go here and um, everything's ready to go. I have my Nucleus Nano over here and I'm just, so here we go, I'm rolling right now. Yeah, now as you see there, there's my Kino, there's Stand and Sally. And there's you guys right there. And I can, uh, it's so nice to pull focus. If you notice right here, my Nucleus Nano is right here on, on my hand, right? So I'm just, I'm just pulling focus here along here. And, and I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're probably like, dude, Nucleus Nano on a shoulder rig, that's a little overkill, isn't it? But it's really not. Um, if you follow the channel you've seen on here where I talked about before when I was doing the corporate gig with the Canon C300, um, it was a super, super low budget thing. But we were in studio, you know, it was a corporate gig for some hospital training videos and we actually had a hospital set uh, down in Orange County. And so I didn't have a dolly. We wanted to do like some kind of tracking shot. And all I had was the shoulder rig and the Canon, oh, let me stop recording, and the Canon C300. And those things are like bowling balls, you know? So I just had it on this exact shoulder rig and I was sitting there like this and, um, and, and we had a, a friend on set for us. We, we were in the hospital set, so we used a hospital bed, just sat on it and we had a friend pull us along on the hospital bed, but it was still, I couldn't hold the camera steady and rack focus at the same time. And because I had the Nano already on there, I just popped it off and you'll see how easy that it comes off of here. Just like that. <laughs> and I literally handed it over to my AC and he um, was able to pull focus on that scene while I just held the camera like as steady as I could. And then the, and the, our friend on set was acting as a grip and just pulling the hospital bed back. And uh, so, you know, you never know when you, when you wanna just pop that off and hand it to someone to help you pull focus and things. So that's why I always rock the, the Nucleus Nano. Another reason for it being is just, it adds more versatility with it being wireless. As you see where it is, it's right here off of my handle. So it's like, 
it's a no-brainer to me. Like, why would I want some weird clunky follow focus up here when it's so convenient right here? Like, look, I'm still on, I'm still on the handle, and I just have my fingers right here on, on the on the wheel, and I can just pull focus so easy. So I love that. As you notice, I have the wooden camera Zipbox Pro, and that's because I've been getting really big into filters lately. I got so many tests I've been doing for the feature film with different filtration, and I got a good video coming out for that for you guys pretty soon here. Um, but yeah, so that's why I'm rocking the wooden camera. It's super light. This thing is under a pound, and it's a swing away. So I can just um, pop this out right here. Bada boom, bada bing. As you'll see there, it swings out, and I can just swap out my lenses right there. And I keep the knicker on it just because uh, I've been collecting Zeiss lenses and they're, they're all different sizes. So the knicker is just easier to accommodate all those different Zeiss lenses. Let's talk a little bit about the 502. Uh, this was my main reason for wanting to go with the 502. Not only is this monitor super light, has all the same features as the 702 OLED. And just like I talked about in that video, you can save the profile to the SD card. When I, saw, when I traded that OLED for the 502 from the guy, I just took my SD card out, popped it in here, um, updated his firmware because he was a little behind on that. And then my profiles are on here now, bada boom, bada bing. And then the side finder, I just, I love it. You know, when, when, I, used to, when I used to film with the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the, uh, the Super 16 one, that camera was a 1080p only. Uh, and I had this Zacuto, uh, I had a Zacuto EVF. And uh, it was kind of old school, but the Zacuto EVF could only accept a 1080p signal. So it worked out perfect with that particular camera. And I've just been missing an EVF ever since then. It's been hard, you know, you know, if you want to not spend like over $1,500 for one. Um, and, and it just made sense to, this Sidefinder is perfect with the 502. Um, and as you'll see here, now here's the coolest part about the Sidefinder. And I know this isn't newest tech because they don't even make this anymore, but I just like uh, talking about it. It comes with a little remote and the remote just, I can control all of the monitor settings and this can literally be anywhere. I could like Velcro this somewhere or, I don't know where to put it, but um, I'd, I'll figure out somewhere to put it. I haven't really figured out where to put this thing. It does have a little belt clip on here, but I just think that's a cool little feature, you know? Um, but yeah, and uh, keeping versatility here. And this is still on the same setup. You kind of have to be watching all of my rig videos to follow along, because I don't want to break down all this stuff for people that have already been on the channel. So if you haven't seen my other rig videos leading up to this one, I'm going to put links to all those down in the description below. And you, it's kind of fun to, to see the evolution of, of not just uh, this rig, but also kind of the channel in general. But um, yeah, and then this, you know, this is still on this. So this still tilts like this. So I can easily just wop, 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 wop. And a lot of these things are small rig. And I'll have links to all these little parts down below if you're interested in checking any of them out. And uh, yeah, but I really love the placement of this Nano. I love the placement of this. And if you'll notice this weight, I can go all day with this. This V-mount is just acting as a counterweight. And, uh, and I got the camera directly above the, the shoulder pad here. So all the weight is just directly on my shoulder. And I could easily just rock this all day and I have. Yeah, so I just thought I would share that uh, with you guys. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things there, you know, the, uh, the, the multi P tap out and mainly this, uh, the, the 502 side finder. I just think that's a great, the, the best part about this thing is that, you know, people want to talk about nits and everything. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, I'm out in direct sunlight. Woohoo, here we go boys. And this thing still flips out. So if you go inside or someone wants to look and take a peek, I, thought, I just thought I'd share that with you guys and you can check out the new rig and um, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. I got a lot of complaints about my, um, my cable management in some of the past videos. Cause you know, I was just kind of more excited and just throwing the videos up. So now this time I, um, you know, they're still a little wild. The problem is they're too long for my liking. So that is a problem, but um, you know, little, little Velcro straps help kind of try to maintain all the cables. It's a lot more cabling than I would wish for. I mean, it's, it's pretty nuts in terms of wires and things, but uh, all in all, it's still a pretty compact rig. It's super light because the 502 keeps it light. The actual uh, map box is really super light. So, so everything is still really light here. Um, and a lot of the weight is just counterweight in the back. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it balances pretty nice too. And it, it's an ongoing process building these things, you know, when you have to build such a crazy rig from scratch. But uh, yeah. I, I really like it. And like I said, this thing's completely tiltable. I could just go down like this or wherever I want to go, you know? And that's just little small rig parts. All right, guys, that's going to be it for now. Kind of a, 
not nothing too exciting, but I just wanted to share that with you guys if you guys are looking at some some latest rigs. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Got some hopefully some cool new stuff on the way to you guys. And uh, for now, that is a wrap. <laughs>